Chemistry Applications of Exponentials and Logarithms. All right, guys. So for me here right now on this November 29th, 2022, this is the last recording I am making for this class. I have made so many recordings. In fact, I'm going to go total them up. Hold on. I do believe this is my 83rd video for this class. Amazing. Uh, I don't know if I'm going to use these videos in the future too. So if I change the curriculum, this might not be the last video that you see. But right now for me in this fall 2022, this is the last video. Hooray. Congratulations, me. Um, uh, yeah. Exciting. All right. I'm going to finish this. I'm going to go home to my son. So here we go. Chemistry applications of logarithms and exponentials. This is mostly talking about radioactive decay, though I did put another type of problem in here just uh, to cover it. But radioactive decay is still using the same A equals PERT formula. It means something a little bit different when we talk about radioactive decay, so I'll talk about that. But like it kind of all makes sense if you think about what these values have meant in every other situation. So we'll start with A. So typically A is our accumulated amount, and that's that's true. Um, but like this is radioactive decay. So we're talking about elements losing mass. So accumulated amount doesn't really make sense, but it is the mass left after time t. So it's decayed and there's some left. How much is left? P. We said P was principal. We've said that P was the initial population. And in radioactive decay, P is the initial mass of our radioactive element. R is the decay rate. And because this is radioactive decay, this should be a negative number because decay is a negative growth change. And in no surprise whatsoever, T is time. There are also two other formulas that, well, it's like one formula written two ways, but that are important here. Um, and that is relating half-life, which is the time it takes for half of an isotope to uh, decay. It relates half-life to the decay rate. So first of all, H is equal to half-life. H equals half-life. So I'll make that note right here. Here are two formulas. R is equal to negative ln2 over H. The decay rate is equal to negative ln2 over H. And if you rearrange that, half-life H is equal to negative ln2 over R. Boom. make it pink. All right. Two different formulas. Again, oh. I don't know where to put you over here. Um, this H value is half-life. Cool. All right. We're good to do some problems now. Here, here we go. The half-life of iodine-131 is eight days. What is the decay function for a 10-gram sample? Round R to four decimal places. So we are told the half-life. We know half-life. It is eight days. H is equal to eight. We want to find the decay function, which is going to look like this, A equals PERT. And with the function, you don't need to find a value for A or T. You just need to find P and R. Really, it's, I've kind of said this before, but A equals, you're trying to fill in this spot. E raised to the, you're trying to fill in this. 
t. So we're trying to find principal, we're trying to find decay rate. We're going to find them separately. We know that the half-life is 8, which means that we could use this formula right here, r is equal to negative ln2 over h, to find our, um, our decay rate. So r is equal to negative ln2 over h. h is 8, so we have negative ln2. Oh, I'm going to give myself space here. Negative ln2 over 8. And I'm rounding this number to four decimal places. And if you do this in a calculator, you get negative 0 0.0866. Right. This is my R value. R. Then we need to find P. And good news for us, it's a 10 gram sample. So P is 10. P is 10. So that's, that's everything. That, that covers everything. P is 10. R is negative 0 0.0866. That is all we need. So we plug it in. A is equal to our initial sample is 10 grams. E raised to the negative 0 0.0866 is our decay rate. And then there's a T. Bam. Decay function. How many days will it take for the sample to decay to one gram round to the nearest whole number? All right, so we need this formula. And we're asked how long until it decays until to one gram. So how much until there's one gram left? That means when is A1? So instead of A, 1. When is A equal to 1? We need to solve for T here. We've done this like a million times. We divide both sides by 10 because we want to get E by itself. 1 divided by 10 is 0 0.1. So we have 0 0.1 equals E raised to the negative 0 0.0. 0866t. Taking the natural log on both sides, we have ln of 0 0.1 is equal to ln of, oh my goodness, this entire thing here. Boom. As you remember, as I've said a million and a half times, ln of e raised to the whatever is indeed the whatever. So the ln e cancels itself out. We have ln of 0 0.1 is equal to negative 0.0866t. If I want to get t completely by itself, I'm going to divide by negative 0 0.0866 on both sides. Boom, boom. This leaves me with t equal to ln of 0 0.1 all divided by negative 0 0.0866. Plugging that bad boy in your calculator and rounding to the nearest whole number, you're going to get 27 days. It's a lot of the same math over and over and over again. Just the same math in different ways. All right. So this this example here, it doesn't really fit anywhere else. This is the best place I could put it. This one's taken directly from Alex. Um, let's talk about it. It doesn't use, it, it doesn't look like the other problems in the chemistry section, um, but it, it had to go somewhere. The number of milligrams D of H of a certain drug that is in a, uh, this should be just D. This is a typo, actually. The number of milligrams D of a certain drug that is in a patient's bloodstream H hours after the drug is injected is given by the following function. D of H is equal to 15 E raised to the negative 0.5 H. 
When the number of milligrams reaches four, the drug is to be injected again. How much time is needed between injections? Round your answer to the nearest tenth. Do not round any intermediate computations. Okay. This is function notation right here. If it confuses you, if it confuses you, first of all, I'm going to make that into the C. You just pretend that's not there, right? That's just function notation. It's just telling you you're plugging an agent. So let's look at it this way. The number of milligrams D of a drug in a patient's bloodstream. So D is the current, not concentration, but the current amount of drug in the bloodstream currently. after H hours, but do, 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 do. Okay. When the number of milligrams reaches four, the drug is to be injected again. How much time is needed between injections? So when the drug reaches four, when the number of milligrams reaches four, so this number, when this number reaches four, they need to re-inject. So we want to know how much time does that take? How much time does it take for this number to become four? And that's what we're doing. We're putting four in for D. And solving this, this right here. So instead of D, we're putting in four. And doing the same math we've done a million times, we're dividing both sides by 15. Boom, boom. Four divided by 15. It's not going to be a nice number, so I'm just going to leave it as four over 15 because it says not to round any intermediate computations. Equals E raised to the negative 0.5H taking the natural log on both sides, ln of 4 over 15 is equal to ln of e raised to the negative 0 0.5h. ln e cancels itself out. We have ln of 4 over 15 equal to negative 0 0.5h. To get h by itself, which is what I'm trying to do, we divide both sides by negative 0 0.5. Boom, boom. And then we get H equals ln of 4 divided by 15, all divided by negative 0 0.5. Okay. If all is good in the world, this will come out to a positive number because we should not have negative time. We can't go back in time and uninject uh, in inject uh, medication into them in the past. That's not how it works. Good news is when you plug this in and round to the nearest tenth, you'll get 2.6 hours. So the medication needs to be re-administered every 2.6 hours. Fun. All right. That doesn't use the radioactive decay formula, uh, but it is, is a type of problem on Alex. All right. Last problem. I'm ready. A radioactive substance decays according to the following function, where y naught is the initial amount present and y is the amount present at time t in days. Find the half-life of this substance. Do not round any intermediate computations. Round your answer to the nearest tenth. Let me tell you why this is no different than anything we've seen. Our formula that we've talked about for radioactive decay is PERT. Right? A equals PERT. This formula is y equals y naught. That's how we say it. Why not? It's y subscript zero. It means the initial y amount. Why not e raised to the negative 0 0.092 t? Let me show you how it works. So p, our initial amount, is the same thing as why not, right? It even says why not is the initial amount. A, the mass left after time t is the same thing as y. y is the amount present at time t. Obviously, t is the same thing as t, right? t, t. 
So this other number right here is the rate, is the decay rate. The question we've been asked is to find the half-life of this substance. If only there were a formula that related rate to half-life. Oh man, how convenient it would be to have such a formula. Bam, right there. We have an R, that's all we need to find half-life. So our R value is negative 0.092. We just grab it right out of this formula here. And we plug it into our half-life formula. So negative ln2 all over R, which is negative 0.092. Plugging this in, negative ln2 divided by negative 0 0.092, you get, rounded to the nearest tenth, 7.5 days. And that, that is that. Just, just took our, uh, just took our decay rate plugged it into this formula. A lot of these really aren't awful. It does take practice though. I, I don't want to trivialize how difficult these, these problems can be. I know word problems in general can be difficult, but they do do the same math. If you don't find yourself finding a pattern with these, you're going to want to spend some time looking for it because the pattern is there and it's strong. So once you can see that pattern, it makes doing problems like this a lot easier. Uh, population growth, radioactive decay, compounding interest, they all use that A equals PERT formula. And it all means relatively the same thing. A is what's left or how much you have after time T. P is the initial amount that you start with, either money or population or uh, mass. R is the amount that it's changing. It's some kind of rate. With interest, it's going to be your interest rate. With radioactive decay, it's your decay rate. With population growth, it's your growth rate. And then T is some time in either hours or years or days, depending on the problem. But it all works the same, regardless of the type of application. Anyway, that is my last video. Maybe I'll like poke in one more video here and just kind of say goodbye. Maybe I'll do a little video of myself. But this is my last video. I did it. 83 videos later. I hope that this was a fun time for everyone. I had fun making these videos. I'm exhausted. I hope to see you. Um, and I guess the last one I'm going to do right now, which is turning on my camera and saying bye. Uh, hope to see you sometime in the future, but not in these videos. <laughs> bye.